everyone. Thank you so much for joining me on this video today where we are talking about vertex form. We are going to be translating it to some different forms, standard form, and then we're going to take standard form and bring it back to vertex form, which can be a little tricky. So make sure you're following along with me as close as you can. Feel free to pause, write things down, press play, do whatever you need to do to make sure you totally get this information. Now, when we're going through different forms, I may do things a little bit very step-by-step step, where you're seeing lots of lines of work, but I'm also gonna encourage you that if you remember how to do some of your multiplying polynomial skills and you know how to jump directly from one step to another step without doing some of the work in the middle, please feel free to go ahead and do that or just simply follow along with what I'm showing you. But I am gonna definitely remind you about those perfect square trinomials that you learned about a little while ago. So let's take a quick look. First problem, f of x equals x plus one squared. This is in vertex form. We can see that the vertex is negative one, zero. We should know that from my other vertex form video. But that doesn't really matter right now. What does matter is that we have this in vertex form, but it's definitely not in standard form. In standard form is when it looks like ax plus by equals c. So everything needs to be expanded out. So x plus one squared, we know that squaring a binomial means to multiply it by itself. And so x plus one squared really means to do x plus one times x plus one. Now, when you learned about multiplying binomials and squaring a binomial, you also learned how to get to that answer pretty quickly. But let's say for a moment we forgot how to do that, but we know squaring something means to multiply it by itself, and now we would distribute. Remember doing the distributing, where you're doing x times x, and then x times one, and then one times x, and then one times one. So if I went through and I was reminding you about how to multiply binomials together, x times x would give me x squared. Then we would be doing x times 1 to get 1x. Then remember, we then have to distribute the positive one. So 1 times x, and then 1 times 1. So it's x and then 1. We would combine like terms, so this would then become x squared plus 2x plus 1, which is a perfect square trinomial because the square root of this trinomial is x plus 1. So this would go from vertex form to standard form. So really what we're doing is we are expanding out our binomial that's squared. And then if there's any k value at the end, we're just adding that on. Okay, next problem. f of x equals x minus 3 squared plus 4. So we need to do exactly what we just did here and then simply add 4 at the end. So x minus 3 squared means x minus 3 times x minus 3. We're going to need to distribute that whole thing out and then simply add 4 x times x is x squared, x times negative 3 is negative 3x, then we distribute this negative 3, negative 3 times x is another negative 3x, and then negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9, and then we need to add 4. So now combine like terms, this would become x squared minus 6x plus 13. That's in standard form. Now let me go back to this one. Since this is in standard form, I'd be able to say my A value is 1, my B value is 2, and my C value is 1 also. In this one, my standard form, A value is 1, B value is negative 6, and my C value is 13. Now, something I want to remind you about, actually jump from directly from squaring the binomial to the answer. Um, you would square the first term, so I would square the x and get x squared. I would multiply x plus 1 together and get 1x, and then double it. That's how you get this 2x. And then you square your last term, which gives you 1. The same thing would have happened here. I would have then needed to do that and then just add 4. So I'd square the x. That's where you get x squared from. x times negative 3 is negative 3x. You then double it to get negative 6x. And then you square the last term to get positive 9. And then I had to add that 9 with this 4 at the end to get that 13. For this next problem, number three, what we need to see is that we need to square this x minus one, but then we need to multiply it by two and then also subtract three. So we've got some different things going on here. So this becomes two times x, plus four, x minus one times x minus one minus three. Then if I distribute this whole thing out, it becomes x squared, then minus one x, then minus one x, then plus one minus 3. This trinomial inside my brackets is 2 times x squared 
minus 2x plus 1. Remember, I could actually jump all this work. I could square the x, get x squared, multiply these two together and double it to get negative 2x, and square my last term to get that plus 1, minus 3. We're going to have to multiply this entire trinomial now by that 2. So this now becomes 2x squared minus 4x plus 2 minus 3. And then our very last step is to do the 2 minus 3. So this becomes 2x squared minus 4x minus 1. All right. You know how we had to multiply out this binomial and then multiply everything by 2 because the 2 is in front and we take care of exponents before we multiply. Remember, that's order of operations. Same thing here. We need to do x plus 3 and square it. And then we need to multiply that entire trinomial we get as an answer by this negative 1 in front. So we don't distribute that negative 1 first. It will not give us the proper result. So x plus 3 times x plus 3. x times x is x squared. x times 3 is 3x. Three, 3 times x is 3x. Three, 3 times 3 is 9. We now have negative this entire trinomial, x squared plus 6x plus 9. And then multiply everything by negative 1. And this is our result, negative x squared minus 6x minus 9. So this is taking these that are in vertex form and putting them right into standard form. Now, let's flip the switch. Let's go from standard form to vertex form. You can see I've got three problems on the screen and they look very, very quick and they actually are quick, but they're a little trickier as far as making sure you really understand perfect square trinomials. So all the trinomials that we just looked at when you square a binomial, those are perfect square trinomials. You just can take the square root of the first term, square root of the last term, take the sign of the middle term, and it is that perfect square trinomial in factored form. Here, we're going to look at factoring these, but we need to actually force them to become perfect square trinomials. Now look, x squared plus 6x plus 8. That is not a perfect square trinomial, but we need it to become one. Now think about it for a moment. x squared plus 6x. If I work backwards and try to purposely make this become a perfect square trinomial, it would be x squared plus 6x. The number that really should be here to make it a perfect square trinomial is a 9 because half of 6x is 3x, and I would want that 3 squared to be my answer at the end for my c value. So look at this, x squared plus 6x plus 9. Imagine I transformed this trinomial into this perfect square trinomial. Because think about it, this would be x plus 3 squared. But I can't just change an equation that was plus 8 and now magically just add 9 to it without acknowledging the 8 that was there. But then also think about this. If I added 9 to this equation to keep it still back to what it should be, I'm going to actually subtract 9 at the end. Now, this looks kind of wacky and all, but you're going to see exactly why we would do this. First of all, x squared plus 6x plus 8 is equal to x squared plus 6x plus 9 plus 8 minus 9. Because do you agree the plus 9 and the minus 9 really become 0 when you add them together? Yes. So it's actually like they don't exist, but purposely we're going to do this because this is now a perfect square trinomial. And this trinomial factored would be x plus 3 squared. And now that I have that, x squared plus 6x plus 9 is x plus 3 squared. I can now simplify this part of my expression, 8 minus 9, and I get minus 1. That's actually our equation in vertex form. I can see my vertex. It's negative 3, negative 1, with an a value of 1. Let's try the next one. This is not a perfect square trinomial. But x squared minus 4x, I want to figure out what would I need to be at the end of this trinomial to make it a perfect square trinomial. Well, really, it's take half of your middle term, your b, so half of negative 2, half of negative 4 is negative 2, and then square it. Half of negative 4 is negative 2, squared is positive 4. So if I purposely put a plus 4 there, that is now a perfect square trinomial. But this equation really has minus 5 in it. So I have to keep that, and then to keep it equal to itself, I need to subtract 4 at the end. So now this perfect square trinomial gets factored as x minus 2 squared. Remember, you learn how to factor your perfect square trinomials. The square root of the first term, square root of the last term, sine of the middle term, 
and then negative five minus four is negative nine. And now that standard form is put into vertex form. I can see my vertex of two, negative nine. Last one, x squared plus eight x minus seven is not a perfect square trinomial, but I can turn it into a perfect square trinomial by taking half of eight, half of eight is four, four squared is 16. Now this is a perfect square trinomial, but if I add 16 in this equation, I also need to subtract 16 to balance it out. X squared plus eight X plus 16 becomes X plus four squared. And then negative seven minus 16 is negative 23. Now, I know this looks funky, but just imagine for a moment, if I gave you this vertex form and you distributed it all out and you, it brought you right back to the standard form, then you know you're good. So if you did all of this work and then you actually take X minus two squared minus nine, just do X minus two times X minus two, distribute it all out, subtract nine, and you realize you get your same answer that you started with in standard form, then you know you're good. I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.